Good morning, everybody. So glad that you are able to join us this morning. We are going to continue with our theme of intentional living. And our title for today's message is going to be, We Serve Like Jesus. But before we get started, let's start with a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for being with us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Like I said, you know, our theme is going to be, or the sermon title for today is going to be, We Serve Like Jesus. And the scripture portion for today is taken from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. We're not going to read through the scriptures. We will talk about a few verses as we go along. And one of the things that I want to recognize here is about James and John come up to Jesus and say, God, we have a wish. You know, how many of us have a wish? My father used to say, if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. You know, that when I was little, didn't understand it very well. But of course, as you grow older, you understand what that really means. If wishes were horses, beggars would ride. And so these two people, James and John, had a wish. And they, their wish was this. In verse 37, actually, it reads, Let one of us, Lord, sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. They're talking about the Lord's kingdom. They are thinking that the uh, God's kingdom is going to be established here on earth. And when that happens, they want to be able to bask in the glory of his greatness in his kingdom. And they want to be in a prominent place when that occurs. And they want to be seated at the right and at the left. And God says, are you able to drink of my cup? And they say, yes, we are. And Jesus says, even so, to sit at my right or my left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those who, for those whom they have been prepared. So when the disciples begin to wonder who can have this prominent place next to Jesus, in verses 43 to 45, the word scripture describes and Jesus says, Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. God's desire for us is this. It is for all of us to be like him. We are created in his image, the word of God tells us. And it's not only that the creation looks like him, every characteristics that the, or every characteristic must reflect who Christ is. You know, in my prayer, I have always prayed, when others see us, let Christ be revealed in us. This is a prayer that my mom taught us when we were young. And I pray this to this day, but uh, you know, the more time I spend in God's word and the longer I, you know, the more I yearn to be with him, God is revealing little by little things that he wants to change in me. And one of the things that I am recognizing is that asking God and telling him when others see us, let Christ be revealed in us is not an easy thing. You know, you can say it easily, but to mean it, and to really act upon it takes great sacrifice, takes great commitment, and most definitely needs the blessing and the hand of God to guide us. So we're going to look at some of the things that, that really, you know, what it means to be like Jesus. You know, I, earlier on I said, if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. You know, and it also reminds me of another thing when we are at the, especially during Thanksgiving dinner, and you know, when you're all done with the food and the meat and the bones are left behind, my sister and I used to fight over who gets the, you know, we would take the wishbone and go, let's see who gets to make the wish. The theoretically, what it's supposed to mean is that whoever gets the bigger end of the bone, when you crack it open, um, they, their wishes, whatever wish they make, that wish will come true. 
And so we would uh, take up the wishbone and go, are you ready? Let's give it a try. Even though we didn't believe in it, it was just a fun thing to do, you know, but like many people did, especially after Thanksgiving dinner. So we would, my sister and I would play that. And sometimes she would win, sometimes I would win. Of course, none of I don't even remember if we made any wishes or if those wishes came true. I'm sure they did not come true if in fact I did make a wish. But, yeah, you know, there are things that we can wish for, but there are other things that we need to make a commitment to see them happen. And wanting to be on the right hand or the left hand of God takes commitment. Wanting to be more like Jesus takes commitment. Wanting others to be able to see Christ in us takes commitment with the blessing and hand of God guiding us to be able to accomplish that task. And so we need to be even more careful in how we pray and what we ask for. I'm reminded of the time, you know, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible tells us that he was in anguish and he went separately to pray, pray to the Father. And the Bible also tells us that when he was in prayer, in his anguish, just drops of sweat was like drops of blood. And he was praying to the Father saying, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. And why did he pray that prayer? He prayed that prayer because he knew that when he took upon our sins on the cross, he would be separated from the Father. Jesus had never known life without the Father. The Bible tells us that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If, you know, well, if you know me, you've known the Father. The Bible tells that Jesus tells us that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you know me, you've known the Father. And to and for God to Jesus to recognize that separation, you know, sin and holiness cannot live together. And when Jesus took upon sin upon himself, that means that he was separated from he would be separated from God. And not having ever known life without the Father, he says if it is your will at all, let this cup pass from me. I cannot imagine life, God, without you. I cannot imagine life, Father, without you. Let this cup pass from me. And he pauses and he says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And I'm pretty sure that when my mom taught us this prayer, she was thinking along the same line saying when others see us more than seeing who we are or what we have accomplished in life, they should be able to see who Christ is and be drawn towards Christ. And that's why she must have taught us this prayer. But that prayer comes with a high price because we are asking God to do something that is unthinkable in the human flesh. But we need to be able to willing, we need to be able to sacrifice, willingly sacrifice ourselves for the sake of God's kingdom and say, Father, it's not about me. It's not about what I am or who I am, but it is all about you. So when people see me, let them not see me as Prabhula, but let them see Christ and be drawn towards you for your kingdom glory to have eternal life in your kingdom. That's what our desire should be. You know, the, the, I'm reminded of a song that says, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I want is to be like him. All through life's journey from earth to glory. All I want is to be like him. That's a high calling. That's a high asking, if you will, more than a calling. It's a high, high price that we are asking of God to say, all I want is to be more like you. But in our spiritual walk, the longer we, we spend time in God's word, the, the more we spend to have that connection with God, the more time we desire to be in his presence, the more earnest desire we long to be in his presence and want to be more like him. God will accomplish that in our lives because he wills for us to be like him. He created us in his image and he wants us to be like him in everything that we do. And so today I encourage you 
to spend time in God's word, spend time in God's presence, search your heart, prepare yourself and give yourself fully to him so that his name can be glorified in whatever way he sees fit to use you for his kingdom glory and let his name be praised. God bless you. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, my desire to be like Him all through life's journey from earth to glory. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for all the things you're doing in our lives, oh God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love you shared on the cross of Calvary right now. We commit ourselves to you, oh God. That's, Lord, help us to be like you and teach us the way we should go, oh Master. Help us to not to caught up in the worldly things and worldly pleasure. Help us to put you first in our lives and walk in your way, trust in you and have faith in you. Draw us closer to you each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all for watching, everybody. God bless you. Continue to pray for us as we continue to pray for you until we meet again. See you later. Bye now. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.